Hello friends, let's discuss one more trick. This session will be a little lengthier than the previous sessions. So let's bear, I know, please bear with me. So let's look at the use case first. Okay. So this is a logging use case where my cloud of 1.0 or cloud of 2.0, where my application is deployed, wants to have all the logs and my external log management tool wants only error logs. Okay. So this is a use case. How we can handle this? This is the trick we are going to discuss. Okay. So let's see, let's look at one by one. So let's say my mule application is deployed on 1.0. Then if I want the logs at both the place, so there are steps. Okay. So first step is you need to disable the cloud of logs on your mule, mule application level. Second, let me show you second, you need to go to your application level log 4 xml and here you need to add your appenders, HTTP appenders. So one appender you need to add for your external log management tool. Like I did it for data dog here. You can have for Splunk, you can have for ELK. Okay. And then you need to have HTTP appender for your cloud of logger. Okay. So right now I'm running from my AnyPoint Studio. So I really don't need that. So I just wanted to show you and focus on our use case first. Okay. So if you want to, you know, configure or integrate external log management tool, this is the way you need to add here. This is the first change you need to do. Get the details and add it here. Second, you need to add that appender reference over here in the line number 30. Okay. So these are two steps if you do you'll be able to push your logs to your external log management tool. Okay. Now let's, let's look at, I want to send all the logs to my, my cloud. Up, okay. In case of cloud of 2.0, I really don't need to disable any cloud of logging directly. I can come to my, my log 4 xml application log 4 xml You just need to add your appender. Same change you need to do that first step, which we did it for cloud of 1.0. We don't need to do that. Okay, because cloud of 1.0 will be overriding your default log4j.xml from your application. That's the reason we need to do that step one. In cloud of 2.0, it actually merges your application log4j and your cloud of 2.0 log4j. Those will get merged. So you, you won't be losing your uh, changes from your log4j.xml file. Okay, so that's the difference between cloud of 1.0, 2.0, and how we can configure external log management tool. So we need an appender extra and then we need to refer it here. Okay. So if you look at this log 4 file, I have not made any other change in the existing configuration. So this configuration is as it is. This configuration till here as it is. Okay. I have added appender reference and I'm referring that data dog. I'll talk about this in a moment. Okay. Now, if I say log info and if I don't add this, Okay, what will happen? It will send or push logs to, it will write it to the file also, and it will write it to the data dog also, all the logs. Now, what I'm saying is, okay, what you do, you give me all the logs. Info means all the logs will get it, warning, your uh, error, all those things. We'll see, we'll run this application and see. So if I do this, all the logs will be pushed to both the parties, okay? Cloud up as well as the data manage, uh, log management tool. The moment I'm adding this condition, what I'm saying is for data dog, I want only error logs. This is the trick, important trick. You won't find any documentation around it, but this is what I have tested and it works perfectly fine. Okay. So now if you go back, save these changes. Okay. And if I go back, my application is already running. Okay. You can see. So let's go back first to our data dog and see last 15 minutes, there are no logs. Okay. And let me go ahead and trigger my application. This is my application. Yeah. So explicitly I am triggering errors over here in my application. So I have requester and I intentionally I'm passing a wrong host over here. So what it will do? It will go to this activity first. It will try to log the attributes.request path, what path we have triggered, and this is info. 
okay and then it will fail here it will go to this activity it will try to build this object and then try to log and this time i'm trying to log it level as an error so what we are expecting this logger this logger will print values on the console but only this logger information will be pushed to datadog let's check that okay so if you look at these two things first let's see what has been printed on the console let's everything is printed on the console you can see the info logs everything now whatever has a error level right so these things this will be propagated to or push to datadog let's check that okay so let me go to the datadog and you can see four logs has been printed in all our error if you go and select anything is pushed as info nothing okay let me go ahead and make a change make a change let's stop this application okay so let me go to log for j and remove this part okay remove this and let's save everything stop the application rerun the application So since our application is getting, uh, you know, um, ready for our execution. So what one more thing I can explain here. So for example, if you don't want this log to be printed, okay, what you can do is you can set level as off. Okay. So this logs, whatever this package, right? The error log belongs to this package won't get printed on your console. So you can add whichever package logs you don't want, then you can go ahead and set this property level is equal to off. Okay. So accordingly, you can minimize the number of error logs or minimize the number of info logs for that specific package. So you can go ahead and keep on adding entries over here, set the level off. Okay. Now my application is, is deployed. Okay. And I have, you can see that I have info log. All info logs are there. Let's go ahead and trigger my application. It should print. <clears throat> so first logger, print this. Now we got exception, these error records. Okay, now if I go to my JSON logger here, see now this many info logs, plus along with that error log also four error logs but last execution you might have seen right i was showing here only error logs were pushed to the data dog okay so that's the use case i wanted to discuss very useful when your clients looking for some cost cutting and they wanted to have only error logs here let's say there is a limitation of a space over there or uh, let's say based on the space they are charging your client so data dog or splunk vendors they are charging based on the uh, how much space you are using then this use case use case is very useful uh, where we are only pushing error logs to your log management tool yeah that's all from this session hope you liked it share with your friends if you are not subscribed till now please go ahead and subscribe the channel thank you